So what I'd like to do in this video is take you through the process of setting up and configuring sub-accounts in MYOB Advanced. Now, important point to note, there are so many different ways that you can configure the sub-accounts. In my blog post, I've talked about a couple of examples. So what I really like to do here is just show you the process. And then, of course, if you've got more questions about how you might want to use sub-accounts in your organization, feel free to reach out to any of the Leverage MYOB Advanced team and we'll be more than happy to help you. So the first thing to bear in mind is that sub-accounts, as you are probably no doubt aware, form part of the finance system. So normally in your finance, in your general ledger, if you go across here into your configuration, this is where you set up your chart of accounts. All right, so if we just take a quick look at the chart of accounts here for my demo company, you'll see I basically have a six digit natural account number. And this is the main chart of accounts. You can see I've got all my assets and my liabilities, uh, my revenue and my expense accounts. So what if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to be able to start getting even more um, capabilities to analyze your transactions across multiple definitions. Yes, you can do your profit and loss and your balance sheet just using these natural accounts. But what if you're in a situation where you needed to see that across more dimensions? Well, this is where you would use sub accounts. So now here you'll see I've got manage sub accounts and you'll see right now is I actually have set up two sub accounts in the system. Now, when you're looking here in Manage Subaccounts, what you're seeing is all the existing combinations of the two subaccounts. I'm going to explain to you in a second why this is important. Let's then go and look at how we configure these subaccounts. And while we're there, we're also going to look at the chart of accounts. So if you go into configuration and you go into your common settings, you'll see we have this area called segmented keys. This is where we set up any of those, um, those key fields like your business partner account code, the chart of accounts code, and the sub account. So if I go in here into segmented keys, and I do a look up on my segmented key ID, you'll see all those different segmented keys. And so here is our account in our chart of accounts. And you'll see it's our GL account, and it has a length of six characters. Let's then take a look at our sub account. So that's on my next page. So here we have our sub account. So what we've got is we've got a scenario where your sub account can have a maximum length of 30. At the moment, I'm only using five characters there and I've broken it up into two segments. So what I've done here is I've set up two sub accounts. I've set up a department that has three digits in its code and an area which has two digits in its code. So now if I wanted to go and add a new sub account, maybe I'm partway through the year and I suddenly realized, you know what, I also want to track by line of business. So how would I do that? Well, what I do is I click here, I would allow it to create my segment ID, and then I'd say, this is going to be my line of business. And then I'll say, okay, I'm going to have um, an alphanumeric code. And I'm going to have two characters in my line of business. So I'll say that's two characters. And then I'm going to say that's going to be alphanumeric. All right. And I'm going to leave my case conversion to upper, uppercase. So that way, if I put in a lowercase character, it's automatically going to update it to uppercase for me. And then I'll hit save. So now what's basically happened is I've now created that additional sub account. You'll see there's just giving me a warning or uh, uh, yeah, it's a warning. It's saying adding new sub account segments will require updating all of the existing sub accounts through the GL configuration sub account screen. So what does that mean? That means now that I've added that, because I have not specified to allow on the fly entry, I have to go and manually update each of those um, account combinations in my general ledger. Now. What on the fly entry allows me to do is if I tick that and I'm just going to save it. What on the fly entry allows me to do is it allows me to 
pull in the different segments into my sub account at the time of entering a transaction. I don't have to go and pre-build the combinations of sub accounts. This department plus this area plus this line of business. The very first time I use that combination, NYOB Advanced is going to create that for me. So this is a very important uh, and very powerful option to select here for your sub accounts. And you can do that with almost all of the segmented keys. Now, you're probably then thinking, all right, well, how do I now set up the codes for each of these? So there's two ways. I can go in here into department, for example, and I can say view segment. And what that will do is that will bring up a separate screen where I can go in and configure each one of my department codes and put in the details of what those departments are. So you see I've got triple zero, which is default, CUS, customer service, DIS, distribution, FIN, finance, and so on and so forth. So that screen that it's taken me to, I can get to directly from the menu here by choosing segment values. So then you'll see I'm looking at my segmented key ID of sub account and I can do a look up here and there are my areas. So you can see each of the different areas that I've configured. Now, if I go and look at my line of business, what do you think I'm going to see in there? Well, I'm not going to see anything because I haven't set up any of my line of businesses yet or lines of business if I want to be grammatically correct. So I'll hit the plus key and let's say, for example, my first line of business um, might be, uh, as is the case um, at Leverage, I've got a line of business which is MYOB Advanced. All right. And then we have another line of business which is SAP Business One. So I'm going to put there SAP Business One. And then another line of business which is Age X3. So I'll put X3 there and then Sage X3. All right, so I've got those done and they're now created. So now it's just telling me, hey, Richard, you've made a mistake here. What have I done? Well, I've actually got an extra line there that I didn't put any details in. So again, simple, just go and select that row and then select delete and then hit save again and we're good to go. All right, so that's how you set up your sub accounts. Now, the next question that people often um, come up with is, well, how do I choose those? Let's go ahead and let's take uh, an example. Now, I'm just going to go and enter a general journal because general journals are nice and simple. They're not overly complex uh, and it's something that everyone's familiar with. So if I go here and I enter a journal transaction and I'm just going to make it a general journal, okay, um, and I go in and I put in a description. I'll put this just my example journal and let's say let's say I could actually spell correctly and type correctly that would be better um, example journal so right now in my system I've got my branches switched on and so then I go down in here and I start adding my lines so it's automatically going to default to my Melbourne branch which is my main branch in this case I then pick my account so let's say, for example, I am just going to record some cash that's, um, or actually, no, that's not a great example. I am going to move some um, um, expenses from one account to another. So I'm going to debit one expense and credit another expense. So I'll go through my expense accounts here and let's find some. All right, so there's my income accounts and then there's my expense accounts. So let's say I have got um, company advertising, 600100. Now what you'll see, as soon as you select the account, it now asks you for the sub account. So hopefully you'll be able to remember what your sub accounts are. But if you can't, I'm gonna show you a little trick and this is one of the things which I often end up showing people because they it's not necessarily that intuitive. If I want to look up the first segment of the sub account, I simply click on that segment and I hit F3. I then get a look up of all of my departments. I click on the second sub account segment. I hit F3 again. I can now see all of my area sub accounts. I then click here on the third segment 
and I hit F3 and now I can see my lines of business. So actually, I had, let's say I'd spent some advertising money and I'd allocated against SAP Business One. Okay, um, so I want to take it out of SAP Business One and put it against MYOB Advance. So I'm going to credit that $100 and then same scenario, 600100. So same natural account, but then in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it against my MYOB Advanced line of business. And you'll see what MYOB Advanced has automatically done. Well, it knows that, you know, this is not one sided journal entries, debits have to equal your credit. So it's automatically, I'm going to try and allocate the balancing amount to that account, which in this case, I'm saying that's fine. And then we're all good to go. So I can either go ahead and I can put the batch on hold uh, and save it, or I'm able to go straight in and I'm able to release that batch. And then that batch will automatically get posted through. All right, so very, very powerful functionality with your sub accounts. And then the other thing I'd like to show you, of course, once you've got your sub account set up, uh, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in another video, you can then go and start generating all of your financial reports based on those sub accounts. So when I go here into my reports area and I go in here to do a profit and loss, for example, one of the things that you'll see, I'm just going to leave that page because I'm happy for that to uh, not to go ahead and, and be posted. When I go into my profit and loss, you'll see you've got the ability now to be able to specify that you want to uh, do your profit and loss based on a particular sub account or a particular sub account segment. So I can click on here and let's say I wanted to do um, my profit and loss on the basis of um, my line of business. Then I would simply go in here and do my lookups. All right, now when you're doing your lookups on your profit and loss, important point to note. It's only going to show you the accounts or the sub accounts here that actually have transactions against them. So right now, I don't have any transactions because I didn't post those. I don't have any transactions here against um, that new line of business sub account. So in this particular instance, it won't show up, but I can just say, you know what? I want to see the um, profit and loss for my customer service area. So I would pick my starting sub account being CUSCH and then my ending sub account would be CUSSS and then I'm just going to get my profit and loss just for that sub account. All right and then of course if I wanted to I can narrow that down and just look at it for the second sub account segment as well. All right I then go and run my report and I'm good to go. So that's a little bit of a quick overview of how sub accounts works. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, if you've got any questions about using sub accounts in MYOB Advance, feel free to reach out to any one of the Leverage MYOB Advance team. We'd be more than happy to help you. You can reach us on 1300 045 046. Thanks and have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn new smart ways to grow your business. You can also check out our blog and follow us on Twitter to learn more and stay up to date. Thanks for watching and see you next time.